a few months ago, I was at a conference for CEOs from around the country. I looked around the room and saw people at their age of 30 to 50. I felt kind of nerve-wracked because they're not from my typical age group, the high school kids, and some of them are even older than my parents. So we had this particular session in our conference when we have to tell us who we are, those introductions. Which business sector do you come from? How long have you been staying in your industry? Where do you come from in China? I felt the tension in the air when everyone subconsciously stared at me, the outlier who seems to be too little to become a CEO. Well, I'm a bold person anyway, so I waited for my turn silently and I ignored their voices. But before I could even start talking, they started throwing questions at me. Like, do you really own a company? I said, yeah, why can't I be? Oh, then your parents gave you the money. No. Then you dropped out of high school. No. I started wondering why they have so many questions at the same time. We just tried to ignore the music on the background. So I wondered why they had so many questions for me. I'm no different than any other person in the room. But they expected me to be this high school dropout who doesn't even know how to start a company or is simply fooling around. I asked myself a single question. Is it because I'm an 18-year-old Asian female entrepreneur who isn't like an entrepreneur? My name is Elaine, and I graduated from Shanghai Foreign Language School, currently operating three separate business, Paradox Lab, RIV, and Unique Room. So we'll try to start from this page. So I'm the rank three of National Speech and Debate Association which I collected 29 coaches, ranging from the national top two to top 50 as the coaches. We all together have 29 coaches, 100, 160 students, and also we have 4,359 views on our very first post. Our students, ranging from within six months, gained 10 champions, five runner-ups, and four third places. And all of them achieved two national champions in this summer, just August, one is from middle school and one is from high school. So the other business we had is called Air IV, which is an original accessory design company. So I started the company with the help of my friends from Parsons, which as some of you might know if you learn design, they're from the top notch designer schools in New York. So with their help, we created a series called Enchanted Eden, which in sense, we created a tons of accessories based on that series. And so the last business I created is called Unic Moon, which is a modern United Nations coaching facility. So we had over coaches of seven years of experience in modern United Nations and also dozens of best delegate awards. In one single summer, we created three seminars and over 10,000 views on our social account. And also we gained 20 awards. So these are the achievements that I personally gained with the help of my friends who are also the coaches of my three separate companies. So there comes the part where we have to look at. So why is breaking the injustice in business so important? Let's first check out some statistics. First, I'm a female. And according to Brandon Gale, 62%, which is men, are likely to become an entrepreneur. In comparison, women are only 38%. Second, I'm under 20. And according to statistics.com, people who range from 20 to 34 years old was only 0.23% of the entire population of entrepreneurs. Remember, that was the number above 20, and there isn't a number count for under 20. So you can see how marginal our impact as an 18-year-old entrepreneur is. So we would consider one issue. 
is stereotype normal? Many people would say, this is OK. Just ignore all of it. Stereotype is fine. You'll live on your own. No. It's OK when you do your individual work. But it's not the same case when you're in the business world where everything is interconnected, where social networking is the basic core survival of your company. If you're being discriminated in your industry, if nobody looks down on, and everyone looks down on you and nobody trusts your abilities, your company is going down. But there is a silver lining because it's all getting better. Women are founding companies at national level 1.5 times the speed on average. And altogether, they're getting crowdfunding efforts and they're also creating more overall support and generating trillions of dollars of sales every year. Still, we have marginal impact in the top 500 companies in the whole world, but we're gaining the impact in the entrepreneurial world. So that comes to the core part of my entire speech, since you've looked at how an 18-year-old young entrepreneur, right after her application, right after what you have just seen from Easy Pass and also TikTok influencer. So young entrepreneurs are always misguided as those people who are being too naive and innocent. You would basically think that they don't know what they're doing, they don't have any abilities, and they're just joking around. That's exactly the misconception I'm trying to point out, that the only difference between us and those successful entrepreneurs who are probably at their 42-year-old white, male, well-educated from a wealthy background, the only difference is this 10-year or 20-year of consolidation of experience. But that doesn't stop us from innovating or putting out those groundbreaking innovations just like what Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg did. And I trust in every individual who sit down here today, after your application, try out if you can be an entrepreneur. You don't have to be in Wharton Business School. You don't have to be this perfect student in all of your class scoring A plus in every subject. All you need to do is a simple idea, the people who can help you on that idea, and also your very concrete confidence in yourself. So that would be the end of my speech. Thank you guys for listening. And I'm really sorry, apologizing for all the technical difficulties we have today.